Hello everyone and welcome to this event, to the first event of our meetup group. My name is Thierry NGK, I'm one of the organizers of that meetup and today we are hosting an event about how to kickstart your machine learning journey. Uh, we have as a speaker Umberto Michelucci, he is a, a Google expert machine learning and today we give an amazing presentation to us about how to kickstart your machine learning journey. If you ever wondered about how to start to learn something, are you interested in machine learning and then you don't how you don't know how to start and you don't know what's the, the basic knowledge that you have to know before to start your journey and what is the basic requirement that you you have to do to have you need to have. So let's introduce the the speakers Umberto today and uh, um, we have the pleasure to, to have our speakers, the Google Expert Machine Learning. Hello, Beto. Hi. Should I should I introduce myself, or you want? Yes. Okay. Course. So uh, my name is Umberto Michelucci. So I'm uh, I'm living in Switzerland. I'm a Google Developer Expert in Switzerland, but I also uh, founded and, and created the AI Competence Center at the largest insurance company in Switzerland, and I also have a company where we do research in artificial intelligence in, uh, in different uh, European funded projects and in different fields from, from medicine to agriculture and so other uh, other fields. Um, I'm also, uh, I also published two books on deep learning and, and TensorFlow and uh, I'll try to, uh, to give you an overview of uh, what machine learning is and maybe uh, discuss a bit or answer your question as much as I can. So I'll try to make it, first of all, I would like to discuss a bit what I understand and with machine learning and what kind of jobs there are. So in the case that you want to, to start or you are looking at going into data science or similar jobs, what kind of possibilities you have there. Uh, I'll try to give you an idea about how complex those things can be and at the same time trying to show you how today uh, easy it can be to build something um, just to give you an idea about the, the really broad range of things that you can do because I, I think it's important to to know that I mean when we're talking about machine learning data science is um, it's a very broad kind of job description that encompass many things and uh, I think there is a place for everyone but not everyone can do everything so it's just a matter of finding probably the, the right place and, and so on so um, so I, I think I'll start with uh, uh, I think that Thierry uh, already like shared the, the presentation what I would like to do is um, is the following um, I would like to uh, give you an idea about what I understand with artificial intelligence and machine learning. Okay, so uh, if you, in a corporate environment in insurance, in banking, there are many systems that, let's say, that are working with rules, that are working, that are more or less intelligence. And so, what really artificial intelligence is, is not so well defined. Okay, there are different opinions. And uh, I'll try to tell you what I find exciting and what. Uh, I think is where one should should probably invest. So, um, and we we will play a game. Okay. So now, typically, I do this when 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 there is a an audience. But I'll try to uh, to tell you a couple of anecdotes or, or stories about how it went a few times. So the problem that I tried that I would like to uh, to solve is a is a, a classification problem. A classification problem is simply. Uh, I'll show you something and you have to, to tell me what, what do you see. In particular, uh, the problem is I'll show you right, a face and, and the, the person in front of me should tell me it's a man or it's a woman face. Okay, And we'll try different things. And, and the goal here, the catch is that you should try to, uh, or we should try together to find rules that, that may help in deciding. So what, what I would like to do is trying to to uh, to find out rules that, that can help in deciding it's a man or it's a woman. Okay, so for example, typically we uh, 
we think right in uh, in in uh, in percentage so we as humans we sometimes when you see a man or a woman or you recognize your wife your fiance or your daughter son mother you are so sure that you don't think you don't you never say like it's i'm 60 percent certain that this is my mother right so we humans are really really good uh, for example, recognizing images, okay, or recognizing voices for that matter, okay. So, for example, if if I see if I show you this picture, I think we all agree that this is a woman, and I don't think there is anyone who will doubt that, okay. Uh, and when I ask people about how you how you decide that is a woman, right? Um, there are many ideas that came out, okay. For example, uh, one idea, and the first that I typically hear. Um, is oh okay so longer and it's a woman right but it's not really always true so there are men who has long hair so you cannot really use long hair as a rule that will work always statistically speaking of course a uh, woman has typically longer but it's not a rule that you can use in all cases okay so many people then start answering my question like what explain your decision like saying for example, eyelashes are longer typically. The shape of the face is different. But then I ask, uh, how can you define shape? How is different? And typically, is there is no one who can really explain that, right? Uh, eyebrows are typically something that are considered different in women. And lips, for example, right? But let's back, for example, a second when we're saying about hair, OK? So if I show you this picture, uh, I'm pretty sure that every one of you will immediately say that this is a woman and not a man, okay? As you would say that this is a man, even without hair. So you don't need the hair to decide if it's a man or a woman. But it, it are the eyes, right? Are the lips? So what, what's, what, what makes you decide, right? For example, are the eyebrows? But you still are going to say that the one left is a woman. Or are lips? For example, typically... Many people say that statistically, woman lips are bigger and, and broader. But if you see right, you don't think that this is a man. Okay. So uh, let me just switch a second just to see if there are any questions in the chat. No, there is. So we can continue. Um, so it, it, the, the thing that I would like to, to realize is that it's very difficult to find rules that can be specified mathematically for a computer that can recognize. Even by saying eyebrows, you have the problematic of identifying where the eyebrows are. Okay. So, but let, let's go on. So, for example, this is also men, right? Uh, maybe you know this this uh, this athlete. And uh, when I show this picture, um, many people are saying, "Oh, I think this is a woman." I'm pretty sure this is a woman. Um, this is actually an athlete that has some kind of uh, uh, testosterone, like uh, I don't know exactly the details, but it, it has a more masculine aspect, but he's actually a woman. It was a famous athlete. There was a, there was a case that uh, she won a lot of races, but, but the, the, the race directors didn't want to give, the, to give her the prize because they thought she's under testosterone and so on and so forth. But for example, when you see something like that and you start being unsure, we also use the language saying, I'm pretty sure that, or I think that it's fairly probable that, right? So we also think, uh in in percentage okay so we also are kind of a, um, a black box that is really good at doing those things but it's also working with percentage only people or humans typically are so good at doing those things that you are always like at 100 percent right but and the the question is that you can try you know this is a very short like example i'll show you another one um and the the problem is that you cannot really explain how you decide. For example, it's even more evident when you're talking about voices, for example. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you if someone calls you, you recognize immediately if it's your mother, your, I don't know, your parents or your daughter, son, wife, husband, and so on. Uh, and uh, it, you cannot really explain, even that is even more difficult because we cannot really put any rules on, on sound. So it's like, it's the pitch, it's like, it's how you recognize. Or, for example, how you recognize language, it's easy to understand even languages that, for example, that where the sound is not good and uh, 
you are really good at those things. So humans are extremely good at specific things, okay, that are really difficult for computers, okay? So let, let's make another problem, for example, dog or cats, right? It's kind of similar thing. And I think that a, probably a three-year-old can recognize a cat from a dog. So it's something that for humans is really easy, okay? So, but, but for example, if you take a cat and we decide, we want to find rules to decide if it's a cat or not. So we can think about the fact that there is a, probably a head, right? And then there is a body. So if I have like this kind of structure, I may think I can maybe tell, kind of invent some kind of program software that can recognize a cat. And if I take another cat, maybe it's slightly larger, but still fit the model. But then you start thinking, okay, let's try different things, right? So is this a cat? Right? It will not probably work with the rules that we defined before, or maybe this one, or maybe this one, right? Or this one, or this one, or we can go even at harder cases, right? How I mean, everyone knows that in the bag there is a cat. Every one of us knows immediately, but for a computer, it's really difficult, right? You see only the eyes and the hair and the, and the ears, right? Uh, or this one. And it gets worse, right? So you have so many cases that it's impossible to define a mathematical rule uh, that actually uh, can uh, solve this problem. So no, no humans can actually do that, okay? Um, and just, just to go back a second to the men and to the faces problem, uh, I don't have the examples here, but uh, I can show you that uh, you only need the eyes to recognize if it's a man or a woman, and uh, nobody's able to explain why. But, but it's really, you don't need the, the nose, you don't need the lips, you don't need the ears, you don't need the eyebrows. It's enough to see eyes and you can recognize immediately if it's a woman or a man. And the takeaway that I would like to uh, would like you to uh, so what I would like you to take away from this is that rules are not working at tasks where humans are really good. If you think like image recognition, right? Uh, we can think about voice text understanding, uh, language understanding, uh, complex problem solving, uh, and so on. Every time or every task where humans are really good at are really difficult for machines. But it's also true the opposite, right? Um, problems where machines are really good at, for example, summing and averaging two million numbers, right? Um, are, in those cases, computers are really good and humans are extremely bad at it. So nobody's able to sum without errors or even probably get to the, to the end one million numbers, even if you have like a pocket calculator, okay? So there is this kind of uh, dichotomy where you have like uh, problems where humans are good, but machines are bad and problems where computers are good and humans are bad, right? And I think that what's really exciting about artificial intelligence, uh, and I think is where probably most of you are interested in, uh, are problems that where humans are really good and you want to machines to learn to do things as humans do. Right. So we are always talking about every time I think that you see a problem where it would be probably easy for a machine. Read the, I don't know, read the, the some address, some handwritten text. Right. Humans are really good at that, apart from doctors writing. But in general, humans are really good at, at, at reading um, handwritten text that are uh, not even their own read, no, their own writing. Right, and for a machine, it's really hard. Okay, so you know, for me, the exciting part about AI or machine learning or whatever you want to call it is really those cases where uh, the, the, the you cannot really define rules by hand that can solve the problem. Let me see if there is any question. Um, yeah, exactly. So I'll, I'll, it's good. So if you have any question, I would like to make it is as, as let's say as interactive as possible. So if you have any questions, especially later when we talk about your questions and maybe jobs or, or what to study and so on, um, feel free to ask everything. I'll try, I'll try to answer those, okay? Um, okay, so we agree that, so we agree, at least that that's my point of view that those are the interesting cases, okay? The way we're trying to solve with neural networks, machine learning, and all those fascinating things that are going on, right? If you think at Tesla, for example, the self 
having car. The problem that the Tesla has to solve, that the car has to solve, like identifying is a passerby is walking in front of the car, is something that humans are really good at, right? So you see if someone is in front of your car, but it's really bad, right? A computer is really difficult for a computer to decide. It's uh, like, you know, it's a, it's a passerby, it's a sign, whatever it is, okay? Um, now, is those things really so complex as, as, as people are saying? So, what we like to do is the following. So now I'll show you something that, uh, and uh, I have to uh, uh, I have to share another screen. Just a second. So let me just give you a second. Let me first start. I would like to to uh, to run a small demo. So what I did is that I wrote a small computer program in Python. Um, it's probably twenty lines. So it's really like uh, nothing much. And is let me let me see. Just a second. Stop screen and share. Just a second. Now, you should see a window of me with a, a, a red uh, rectangle around it with uh, my name under it, okay? This is a small, stupid demo that I wrote in, as I say, 20 lines that using just one picture of me can actually recognize me, okay? Uh, you can see, recognize me, it can, uh, I think that I, I try, I don't have it here, but I don't know if with the mask it will work. It still work. So uh, it's really like, and it's using only one picture of me. Okay. So that means that the system is able using just one picture to recognize me in different configuration. I try with the head, with the sunglasses, uh, and so on and so forth. So um, let me let me stop this and uh, and let me share again the the my presentation. So um, this is like, you know, like a, a small demo to show you that it's really easy to build something like that. But then the question arises, okay, but if it's really easy, why everyone is saying that it's so difficult? Why is so difficult to study? Why we need so, so things, so many things like mathematics and, and Python programming and whatever, right? Uh, and I would like to give you an idea about how complex, right? Uh, what, what you need in the background to actually, I mean, writing the code is very easy and you get something that works, but to get to the point to use that and to, to do everything from scratch is really, really complicated. And I would like to give you about an idea about the kind of skills and, uh, and, uh, and all the different parts that you need to develop something like that, okay? So, but let's think just for a second what's happening there. So the this small stupid demo is just get images from the webcam, right? It check if there is a face in the image, uh, identify if there is a position. If yes, there is a identify the position, it must compare the face with some images that has somewhere, right? And then if it's a face identified, it will draw a rectangle with a name and then or draw a rectangle with a known. Okay. So that's basically what, what's going on. And what I would like to, to focus on is not the entire process, but just the problem of identifying if it's a face in the image or not. The problem of identifying the position is an even more complex problem, but let's focus for a second just um, and trying to see how can we, uh, let's say, build something that can tell me there is a face in the image or not, regardless if it can identify or not, or where it is, just if there is a face or not, okay? So, the first thing that you will realize is that uh, uh, building those kind of things in machine learning is like a puzzle, right? So you need so many things, right? For example, you need to get images from the webcam, okay? You need to identify if the face is an image. So now, the the first thing that you notice that you start noticing is that, oh, getting images from the webcam has nothing to do with machine learning. It's more like I need to know how in Python I can get images. Good. This is something. So identifying if a face is an image is machine learning. So we are starting to see that you need two pieces. Some is in the images provided, so you compare. So that's less machine learning related. Uses the output of machine learning, but it's not machine learning, uh, and so on, right? Uh, for example, compare features has nothing to do with machine learning, find the best matches has nothing to do with machine learning, add bounding box and name to the webcam image has nothing to do with machine learning. Okay, so to 
Just to solve the problem, this small demo, you have to put things together and some things have to do with machine learning, meaning you have to have experience in that field, and some have nothing to do. So you have to put together skills that are not strictly all related to machine learning. Okay. Okay. So to, let, let me first start it this way. So to, you, when I go back here, for example, identify if a face in an image, you need some kind of machine learning. And machine learning uh, is, for those of you who doesn't know or who don't know, it's a way of a software to learn from examples. Okay, so you show the, the, the software a lot of examples and you say, this picture has a face, this picture is not a face, and you give it lots and lots of images, and uh, these machine learning kind of software models, they're called, right? And what you do when you say you train the model, meaning that you let the software learn, they kind of find the best set of, it's called parameters, meaning a set of numbers that they can use to decide if there is a, an image or not. And uh, the, uh, those 20 lines software, what I did, I downloaded a model, a neural network that was already trained by someone, not by me. So this means that those parameters were already there. Someone found them for me. And the question is, for example, how do you, what do you need to find those parameters? Huh? So those models that I've used have been trained with four, 14 million images. Okay, so the data set, the set of images that I use is what uh, um, it's typically a data set that has around 14 million images. Now think about the size that this data set has. Think about the fact that you have to load it in memory and it takes probably gigabyte and gigabyte and you need a hard disk that is big enough and so on and so forth, okay? The neural network that, you know that the neural network is something that is like a, a large black box with numbers that change. Excuse me, uh, I think your microphone is mute. Oh, it, it just got muted. Is it okay now? Yes, the, now okay, it's okay. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know why. Um, so what, what I was saying is that uh, this data set uh, that was needed uh, is 14 million images and that you need 11 million parameters uh, to actually and that you need 11 million parameters uh, to actually... Uh, uh, excuse me? Strange. Okay, uh, maybe... I think you have, you, you, have the, you have the screen opened in another tab. So because they I... are interference. Okay, because I don't have anything else so open, but, but maybe I'll... Let, let me try this. In another tab. So... So could you please uh, that... mute uh, the YouTube? Okay, I, don't have I don't have YouTube open. I don't have anything, anything else open. I don't have YouTube open. I can, I can close everything, but I don't have anything. Open. Should I should I try to get out and get in again, Thierry? Do you want me to? Yes. Or I can, I can close everything, but okay, I will try that. Or, or maybe do you have maybe YouTube open?
okay so can you hear me like okay so then we we can try again Yes, I think everything is okay now. Like, okay, so yes. we, we can try again. Okay, so I'll try. It should not be muted now, right? You can, yes, it's fine now. Perfect. I'll just keep it like this so that we avoid like, uh, to have like, uh, let, let's do this. Maybe so that I can check if it's muted or not. So what we're saying is that um, you actually are need the uh, mathematical algorithms to find the 11 million parameters uh, you need a lot of time because finding those 11 million parameters mean really weeks of get muted every time um I, i'll leave it like this i don't open another window so i'll just switch and then come back here um now it's and and then you need also like uh, additionally algorithms so it, it's really like a, like a puzzle of skills that you need to get this done okay so the message that i'm trying to give you is that a data scientist or a machine learning engineer or an artificial intelligence engineer whatever you want to call it uh really needs like lots of different skills to work okay so i i've met people that have studied statistics as a phd in statistics and and um, i'm telling me that they are statisticians and they don't need to write any code and they don't need to understand like how to write code and that i think is really the wrong approach if you if you're interested in doing data science or machine learning you really need to cover all the parts from understanding the data working with the data programming and doing like uh, you know distributed programming in fact if you if you go in the next slide so if you on the next slides uh you see that you really have like uh, you have to have programming experience for example you really need to work with lots of data and maybe maybe you know like uh, write your own functions to load batches of data you need to, to really work on the algorithms, uh, they're really difficult in, in like the mathematical part is really um, very hard and there is like no out of the box solutions. So it's really hard. So I'm saying PhD level, I'm not implying that you need a PhD to do that, but I'm implying that you really need to have spent a few years working on the mathematics of those objects. Now to write those 20 lines, the demo that I showed you, okay, uh, you don't need to, to do any math, okay? You can get that and uh, download it and understand it. But if you want to develop, for example, new models, and we will get there to discuss that, it's really, uh, you really need lots and lots of, uh, uh, of know-how on how to do that, okay? Uh, you need to have like programming experience, for example, to write code for, um, for GPUs and NVIDIA and, uh, you know, parallelize software and do distributed computing is also, and, and unique skills that you that you need not for the 20 lines but when you're trying to use for example those data centers is also something that you need to learn okay okay so um again so like the idea is that an IE project is like uh, a puzzle where you have like a huge amount of possibilities and you have also a huge amount of tools and i think that one of the things that, that is really difficult for beginners is also to know what to study, right? What tools, what software, what, I mean, you have in mathematical part, you have algebra, calculus, you have TensorFlow, you have Python, you have what well, you don't know exactly, right? And the difficulty is really exactly that. So the difficulty is really trying to find the best tool to solve the problem. And it takes quite some time. So, um, well, well, we'll get to courses and so on and so forth, okay? Uh, this was just, just I think it, it, it's fun, not probably for the men, but uh, uh, sometimes what the message of this image is, uh, sometimes you don't find all the pieces and this is where this experience comes in because you have to develop your own kind of pieces to, to, to fit, especially when you're starting to do more research kind of work and you want to have this kind of custom loss functions or these strange things and uh, uh, you really need to start uh, developing your own stuff okay um, this is a video that uh, you can 
well, we, we, we skip that. Let, 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 let's I want to just to give you an idea about, for example, how this can be used. For example, the 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 U.S. Postal Service use machine learning to read the the address and just to read the the you know the in German it's called Postleitzahl is um, this this number one four two two one that identify the city where where you are sending the letter and using like machines and, and machine learning uh, they really are able to sort 80 more than 80 percent of the letters and it's a lot of money saved okay um so you can really like build systems that are really bringing uh added value to a company or can solve the problem that otherwise would not be possible because the the speed that a machine can process this is nothing right compared to what humans can do because humans would be really slow okay um and I would like to come to, to this part also and, and just discuss it just very quickly about the fact that why you probably have heard the, the fact that, oh, but when you're doing deep learning and machine learning, you need lots and lots of data. And I would like to give you an example why is that. And, and needing lots of data is also a challenge of its own, not only like because you need to know how to load it and use it, but also you may sometimes you need to know how to get it right how to measure it and so on and the example that i like to do is the following if i give you this problem i give you a couple of numbers right two four three nine eight sixty four and I ask you what is the the, the 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 image for nine i'm pretty sure that everyone um in the audience we immediately tell me is 81 is the square of the number right you have enough examples and that seems is enough okay now, if I show you this example and I tell you it's just two and four and I ask you what is nine, right? You cannot tell me if it's 81 or if it's 18. It could be both, right? You don't have enough data to take a decision. And that's exactly the problem with machine learning. Since machine learning learns from examples, meaning that it needs lots of data to learn, unless you have enough data and the data is relevant, you will not get like enough information to decide. Okay, um, but what's what's I mean? This is it seems that uh, right. It, it may seems that my message is um, like that is very difficult and it's very challenging and it's it's impossible to do it and it's not the case. So we are entering a phase in which AI is becoming usable by everyone. Okay, um, it's still difficult to develop from scratch, but you get lots of libraries. Um, um that you can start using now the the fundamental question i see there is already a question that says uh, resources for someone that's lacking the mathematical background and is actually a very very important question because i don't think that in the landscape of machine learning and data science everyone needs this mathematical background it depends on the kind of job that you are going to do okay um but for example let me see, for example, what I, the, the, the thing that I'm trying, the examples that the parallel that I would like to give you is the following. At the, for example, if you, if you think about jigsaw puzzles, right? I think that, I mean, my wife loves them, I don't, but um, but the, the first jigsaw puzzle was done by hand, right? You had to cut woods in the right shape and it took a lot of time and it's like uh, you needed the tools, right? Um, and in like in last century, it was like really hard to do it and you had to like... Uh, glue like the photon wood and the, you had the presses and it was extremely expensive, right? It was really hard to do. But now today, right? And you needed lots of things, okay? It costed a huge amount of money. And now today, right? You have laser cutting, you have printers, and it's really easy to take the pictures of your, ch of your children and make a puzzle out of it, okay? So with time, right? Something that was before very expensive and very complicated, right became something that is really easy and that's the same kind of things that is happening with machine learning okay so um now there are no we, we can get to uh, actually the more interactive part where i answer your question so the 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 thing that i would like to to give you as as, as a message is that there are many job profiles 
okay? From data engineering, meaning that uh, you are someone who is able to work with data really easy. They know SQL, they know how to get data from databases, they know how to clean data. Um, they're really good at in, uh, structuring data, restructuring data, and so on. I work with one data engineering, engineer once it was a dream as soon as we had a question can you can you give us the data structure in this way it was like no problem ta, 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 ta. and it was really really an important part of the project so for example you can work more if you're more like software oriented more in that engineering um, and not many company really have the skills or the infrastructure to perform complex ML. So maybe you are looking at something that where you need to do software development, but you can use existing, for example, API, for example, Google, Google API or from Amazon or Microsoft Azure, for example, right? You can use those without having to develop those things from scratch. Okay. Uh, one of the suggestions I always give to Anyone who wants to start or move into the data science, machine learning, data engineering, whatever it is, is to start to create a portfolio of projects. So when I, when I try to hire someone, um, one thing that I always want to see is not, not only like the skills you have, I don't care much about if you had like courses in algebra or calculus, but I really like to see how you think or how you organize your material and having like a GitHub repository in Python that is well documented where the, the results are presented correctly, where even if it's like, you know, even if it's a very dumb example like MNIST data set and something that everyone has done it, but you can always like trying to make it your own uh, by explaining things differently, um, adding a good presentation about the results, about the data and so on. And it's, uh, I think one thing that I always like give as a suggestion uh, to everyone, okay? Um, to, to, to address quickly, I think this is most, this is the, I think the last, the last slide I have. So to answer the question that, for example, which resources courses would you recommend for someone? Okay. Um, um, I think that, uh, one of the resources that I find probably best or the, one of the best one is, is the Coursera courses uh, from, uh, from the deep learning.ai. For example, the, you know, Andrew NG, they have like different, um, how you say, different uh, specializations. There is a deep learning one, there is a basic TensorFlow one, and there is an advanced TensorFlow one. Uh, for example, if you want to go in, in machine learning or in, in neural networks, those are really good courses that you can attend, okay? Um, and especially if you have a good Python knowledge, these are really good. Another really good resource that you can use to learn is DataCamp. Uh, I really like the fact that you get like uh, different courses for different problems, like you get the entire data science like process, like uh, from data cleaning, from data loading, uh, on, on to, to one um, uh, and so on and so forth. So you can really start working on how to clean the data, easy models, present the results and so on. Those two are really are really nice uh, um, nice things that you can you can use to uh, to kind of learn. It's, it's, it's still like programming oriented, but it's, it's really good. Okay. Um, and the question that, for example, assuming the, the person wants to eventually get into even cutting edge work, uh, that's also a good question. Um, I would say, uh, first of all, I would say that it takes some time, okay? It's not something that, so avoid courses that, that promise you to, that you will be an expert in deep learning in three months, in one month, in three weeks, in six weeks or whatever, uh, this is, Sorry for the word, this is bullshit, okay? You need probably a couple of years because before you can really get to the point. Um, I think that if you, for example, uh, if you have like a few examples and if you do like those courses, uh, the best thing is probably to try to get some internship in places where if, I mean, if you are a student, for example, with companies that where you have a chance to work with someone more experienced and on real life problems, because, Having, I think, one of the things that are probably most useful uh, is trying to find kind of a mentor that can help you uh, in 
and, and work on real life problems. Okay. Uh, so it's, if you can find internship in places that really do machine learning and uh, with real life problems, in my experience, this is, um, um, this is really, really useful. Okay. Um, or, uh, I mean, trying to maybe ask someone with more experience and try to address, um, let's say, some real life problem. For example, Kaggle is also a nice website where you can try to work on real life problems. But I really think that uh, if you manage to get to work with someone else that is really like uh, useful. And again, I think that uh, if you have to choose, for example, I see many people, I saw many people when applying for jobs that uh, like send like a long list of online courses and doing the, having the online courses on the, on the curriculum, it's okay. There's nothing wrong about it. And it shows that you are really willing to, or the, you have the interest of doing that, so it's good. But many people just click through the courses, and it doesn't mean necessarily that, that you are really learning what you've done. The best way to show that is really like building like GitHub like repositories. For example, something that works really well, um, and I think that uh, Thierry knows that, for example, if you want to get like kind of exposure to Google or those companies, is like publish something, uh, write on medium write your own blog technical blog and and i can assure you that if i see a well-written blog on a very trivial case i appreciate it a lot more than you know like a curriculum with 20 online courses and nothing to show for uh, i don't know if you really are able to like explain and work with people and if you explain in your blog like something that is slightly more complex or maybe something how you develop something or the difficulty you had it's a a good door opener especially if you want for example an internship or something uh, something like that okay um and uh i the question is if i can share my github contributions yeah sure um i can also um now, Thierry, just a question. How we do that in the best way? Because uh, I can, uh, where I can share the link on, on the on the YouTube channel or where, it, because here I cannot put any comment. You know? I don't know if uh, Thierry is coming yeah, okay. yeah, Yeah, you can send it in, in comment or in the private chat. No, no problem. Okay, let, let me, I'll, I'll just send you my profile in GitHub. Uh, I don't have, like, at the moment, the, the official recognition, I don't think it still is there. But, for example, uh, uh, I'll send you, uh, Terry, my, my GitHub in the private chat. You can share it. Um, you can find there, like, uh, several lectures and courses I've done with TensorFlow and uh, on, uh, uh, like, in London, I did one. And you have lo lots of things that you can check there. But I'll I'll put that um, I'll also put um, the the one there uh, over the weekend. Um, but you can find like different things that that uh, that you can check if you like. Um, or you can uh, happy to I mean I can uh, Terry I can put my my email address. I don't know if people has it, but they can happy to contact me if, if you can share it too. Okay. Um, um, and if anyone like wants to have a question, I'm happy to answer them. But so, to just to summarize, um, I think that what maybe something that I've also observed is the following thing: the fact that someone starts and uh, and then realizes that they are studying uh, and they realize, oh, the math is so difficult, I cannot really get through. I don't know how to do it. It's really necessary. Maybe you are very good at programming, but you struggle with mathematics, right? It can happen that you are actually, maybe we, you would not enjoy this kind of work where you have like to try to find and derive formulas and stuff like that, right? So the, the, I think that the best thing also to do is for example, if you do the deep learning AI specialization from Andrew NG, uh, you will see there are lots of mathematics in there, like matrix multiplication and calculus and stuff like that. And you can get an idea if you enjoy that, if it's too difficult, if it's too much for you. And it doesn't mean that you cannot do machine learning. It just simply means that maybe 
uh, you will not enjoy like this kind of kind like university research where you actually developing new models and you are maybe you will enjoy more something like applying existing models or existing API to problems is still an exciting and, and machine learning related fields that is probably a lot more marketable than you know like if, if you have like this kind of very like mathematical kind of uh, academical interest then it's probably very difficult to find a job for those kind of profiles while if you're very good at like google cloud um i don't know so auto ml and uh, the aws and then maybe microsoft azure there are many companies that probably you can uh, you can approach with those experiences okay so if you just start thinking about how marketable my skills are at least is what i see in the market there is a lot more interest in those kind of things one of the important thing that i um I also suggesting because I see that a lot is the following. When you um, when you are, for example, if you prepare a portfolio or you are, for example, you want to get a job in machine learning, one of the most important thing is that you show that you are capable or you're trying to understand the problem you're trying to solve and the data you have. So one of the most challenging thing probably the most challenging thing in any machine learning project is not probably the the development of the models but is understanding exactly what the problem you're trying to solve is now, if you take this kind of tutorial you find online oh you want to classify handwritten digits it's clear you want to classify those digits right but when you're starting to go in real life problems it's not at all clear what kind of problems people want to solve, especially in companies. Many comes and have lots of data and say, oh, let's see what we can do, okay? And that's very difficult. And so one, one big part of the job is also working with your like uh, internal or external client and trying to, to understand a bit, okay, what are we trying to do here? What, what do you want to do? What, what kind of problem you're trying to solve? Uh, and I think that when you are doing like uh, a portfolio or you are creating a GitHub, it's really important to also at the beginning try to explain well what the problem you're trying to solve, what are the limitations, like you know, like kind of a, what you would do in a research project where you start with the problem, you start with the contribution you have done, and at the end you have the conclusion and a summary where you explain, oh, you know what, I've done this and this, but that would not work in the case, or are you studying that, or are you studying this other problem? Okay, so I think that. Well, to summarize the message is that a data scientist, even a machine learning engineer, is not something that sits in a dark cellar and develops these kind of very fancy algorithms, but there are, is someone who has a very broad range of skills. So you, you have to have programming skills, you have to understand the data, you have to understand how to communicate results, understand the problem, and are really trying to cover the entire range or the entire like uh, kind of from data gathering to results communications okay and the more you can cover probably the more marketable your profile your profile is okay um and regarding courses again to summarize i think that you have to kind of try and see uh what really is working for you so i i really would would tell you to try to for example to try one of to Coursera specialization and check what the, if the mathematics there is too much. Uh, and then you can actually go to the TensorFlow or go to a classical to data camp and just study pandas and NumPy, build your own portfolio. And while doing that, you will realize what you like and what you don't like and what it's easy for you, where you have to work a bit more. And then you can actually kind of iteratively uh see what which direction you're going are you going more in the data engineering part are you going more in the data science part and you can actually build from there so what i what i wanted to say is that it's probably the best way the best approach is to start and and do something and try to build something and maybe show someone i mean i'm happy to to, to have a look at if you have a github repository if you want to to have some kind of feedback i mean or you you know you can find and try to find an internship somewhere or try to like Thierry has this platform for example you can find you you can create your own meetup and and decide that uh, you will tell everyone uh, how to build your own first reliever's first um neural network 
Right, and or you can build, uh, you can actually start your own student group on machine learning if you are at university, or you can, you know, you can, you should try to get out and and uh, and create something that people can check if you want to, uh, even if it's really done. Because to find a place as a junior, like uh, you know, data scientist. I'm pretty sure you, I mean, I would not ask for like uh, this advanced neural network stuff or distributed programming. I simply would like to see someone uh, who is able to think about how to, to, to structure a problem and solve the problem that has some knowledge about some algorithms that they can use with the idea that they can also teach those people. Okay. So, I, but, but I need to see something concrete and an only curriculum with 10 or 20 courses. It doesn't tell much, okay? And many companies are not really interested in, in just, you know, like looking at uh, question. Um, now, I would like to address also another question that I think it may, it may be relevant for some of you and is, do I need a master or a PhD to do machine learning? Uh, and that depends, okay? That, that's not... Um, oh, there, there is another question, sorry. Uh, what excited you the most? Oh, what... Uh, what I really love about machine learning is, is the fact that, uh, I mean, I, I like difficult problems to solve difficult problems. And what I love about machine learning is that it's not programming alone, it's not mathematics alone, it's not understanding the data alone. Um, you bring so many things together and uh, you can approach so very complex problem and trying to solve things that nobody solved before. And it's really exciting for me to be able to really Put, like I showed you this puzzle idea and I really love that. So you can you can put puzzles a piece there and then I, I love physics so I can check if there are physics problems that I can solve with machine learning and maybe statistics is relevant and, uh, and I like the kind of flexibility or this kind of exciting possibilities of putting things together and somehow making those work and solve a problem that was not solvable before. And the other thing that I love about machine learning is the fact that you can actually try to solve extremely complex problem that seems impossible to solve, right? And I love to uh, to this kind of uh, this kind of problems that seems very hard to solve and and finding those creative. I think it's a really creative uh, job that that allows you to really like use different things and put together some creative ways things, and that, that's really exciting. So. Um, so what I wanted to say is master or PhD. So again, that depends. Okay. So uh, to go into the like more the uh, like companies where they they do like uh, you know APIs and um, and more classical data science, uh, you probably don't. Um, the moment that you want to do really a bit more cutting edge research, a master helps. So you should have probably at least aims for a master, possibly in, in some kind of related field. Like, you know, mathematics, physics, possibly computer science, if you have something. Um, um, and uh, a PhD is relevant, for example, if you want to do any academic kind of like work, like really research work, it helps a lot and allows you to really uh, work with universities. And also if you, I mean, if you're, dream is to work at companies like Google or Facebook or whatever is those kind of companies. Even if they say that, you know, they have like this, they, they believe that uh, everyone should have possibilities and that those courses that you can attend gratis, they still hire mostly PhDs. Okay. So even if they say that it's not relevant, but it's still a way of simply because doing a PhD gives you like four or five years time where you do research in machine learning. And it's a lot of time where you can actually showcase what you can do, right? It's a way of doing just that, right? Instead of like working on more practical problem. So if you are a student or if there are students and you're wondering, uh, it's a bit depending on, right? Uh, but doing a PhD means you really love doing like research and, uh, and spend time writing papers, writing stuff. And uh, so it's, uh, it depends on what you enjoy. Okay. Um, so now it's almost 12. Um, I'm mostly done. So, I mean, I hope that some of the things that I told you was useful. 
Um, and uh, if anyone has additional question, happy to happy to help anyone or con or you can contact me. Uh, and I hope that I could give you some kind of ideas about what you can do. And uh, really, probably the one of the suggestions I think is most important is really to like get out and build something something write something so to show people even if it's a very easy case don't worry about the fact that every other 10,000 has done it but at least you can actually showcase that you can explain things and, and work on that and, and so on and so forth uh, that would be it uh, if you have other questions you can put it in the chat or contact me later I'm happy to answer those I think that uh, Terry is probably, I don't know if he's online, but uh, it's probably is online, but so I hope it could be helpful and uh, let me know if I can help in any way. Okay, thank you Umberto, for this amazing presentation. And then I um, I hope our attendees are satisfied uh, from this uh, presentation. And thank you again for taking your time to to give this talk today. And then we are a new meetup group and um, we promise you to organize at least one event per month. And you have amazing speakers, amazing events monthly. So just subscribe to our channel to don't miss our further events. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I don't know if uh, Umberto has anything to add. Yeah, yeah. Terry, before leaving, there is just one last question. Um, where this uh, Masa is asking for someone with not advanced programming skill is advancing the skill the priority. Um, and uh, I would say uh, is one of the priorities. Uh, I would say that if, especially if you enjoy programming, it's surely something that you will realize the moment that you're starting to do more advanced stuff, the more you know about programming, the easiest, the easier will be for you. Okay, but I would say that not just probably it's probably boring just to study like you buy a Python book that is so big and you study every page and you know everything about Python. It's probably better to like starting like with together with data science, maybe on data camp, or maybe on the exercises on Coursera, and you will start looking at, for example, oh, here I would need to do like uh, a loop in Python. Let's study how to do loops efficiently. And you, you kind of build up small things by small things by, by doing things. It's, I think it's a bit more fun than simply studying this 5,000 Python Bible or whatever it's that, that you can find. Sorry, just as a last answer. OK. So thank, thank you also for the invitation. I don't know if there is another question. OK. OK, OK. Okay. There is no so, question, I think. So we are about to close that event yeah. today. And thank you all for watching this event and hope to see you for our next events. Bye-bye. Okay.